Hello everybody! Man, has it been a long time since I've done an EDC update video, so thought I would take a little time today and show you guys what I've been carrying for the past couple months. Lots of new faces, a couple old familiar pieces of gear there, but uh, for the most part, still keeping it as minimal as I can and erring towards the side of slim and compact lightweight EDC items and going for more specialized tools and more heavier duty things when I need them. So. First thing first is the TRM Neutron. I got on the wait list in early July and didn't get this until early September, but man, was this thing worth the wait. There's a lot of really positive reviews out there and this thing really does live up to all the hype. The fit and finish and the construction is absolutely phenomenal. It's super, super smooth with that drop shut action. And best of all, it's ultra slim and compact and just disappears in the pocket. This has really become my go-to knife for camping and hiking and anywhere where I just don't want to carry a really big bulky knife. I really, really love this little blade. Next up is the TRM Atom. Again, I got on the wait list in early July and didn't get it until a couple weeks ago. And ever since, this has not left my pocket. I really, really like this knife. It's hard to say which one I like more. They do look very similar, but the feel in the hand is completely different. You can see here that the Neutron is just a little bit thinner, which lends itself better to disappearing in your pocket, while the Atom has a little bit better contouring on the scales and fits in the hand just a little bit better. So hard to say which one I like better. I really think these two complement each other very well. While I don't carry both of them at the same time, I do kind of think about what I'm going to be doing during the day and choose accordingly. I really do not think these things are going to leave my pocket anytime soon. And I'm going to be very hard pressed to find a better knife for my overall ADC use than the Atom or the Neutron. Next up is a brand new knife in the collection and honestly a very big break from what I'd normally carry. This is the ZT0230. It is a collaboration between ZT and Enzo. Fantastic little design, very eye-catching. I've always really liked his Monte Carlo, the knife on which this is based. I pretty much instantly pre-ordered this as soon as I saw ZT announced it earlier this month, and I am very happy I did because this is a fantastic knife. It is a complete break from what I normally carry because I just don't have that many slip joint knives. Not that I have anything against locking knives, but I usually just gravitate towards a more modern, traditional tactical sort of folding knife and this is a uh, good break from that. This one also does not have a pocket clip which is something I'm not very used to, just dropping a knife into my pocket. Overall just a very fancy, sleek and slim knife. I really think it's a fantastic addition to my rotation. If you want to see a little bit more about it I'll have a link down below to my initial impression video of this knife but fantastic little blade nonetheless. Next up is another complete break in tradition and that is carrying around a fixed blade knife. Honestly, fixed blade knives are bigger, they're more bulky, they don't, they're do not they not as compact, so they don't really fit very well in my overall philosophy when it comes to EDC. But the Spyderco Bow River that I've got here has been a very nice little way to mix things up. I've been dropping it in my back pocket every now and then, and it has been a very fun little blade to carry around. These things have been pretty much out of stock everywhere for the past couple months for a very good reason. 35 bucks, you get a nice, High quality knife with a leather sheath, extremely hard to beat, especially from Spyderco. I've been using it in the kitchen, I've been prepping firewood for the fireplace, and I've taken it camping, and this thing is a fantastic little guy. I very much look forward to um, keeping mixing things up and throwing it in the rotation every now and then, but it's a fantastic little blade, and I really think it's extremely hard to go wrong, especially for the price. I mean, Spyderco has done a phenomenal job with this little knife. The next big component of my EDC is a writing implement of some sort. Whether I'm working on the medic unit or the fire engine or just going about my day-to-day -day life, I always have a pen with me. I am constantly taking notes and jotting down to-do lists and that sort of thing, and it's just something that I've found very invaluable. This is the Zebra F701. It is a fantastic pen, and it's a mainstay in EDC videos across the internet because they are darn cheap and super solid performers, coming in at about 10 bucks. Just make sure when you buy these, you get the all metal version. The old ones used to have this plastic back ring right here, which would strip out, causing your pen to fall apart. 
Fantastic performer. I actually went ahead and bought about five of these and have them spread across my work uniform, my EDC bag, and my pocket. They're everywhere. Fantastic pens. Super solid performing and just very nice overall construction and feel in the hand. You really cannot go wrong with these. Next up is the Countycom Embassy Pen. I've really been interested in this pen ever since I got into EDC 10 plus years ago, but just haven't gotten around to buying it. I saw they were on sale a couple weeks ago and just pulled the trigger and I am extremely happy with this pen. The machining and texturing on this thing feel very nice in the hand. It's a little bit more aggressive than your standard EDC pen, but for me, especially at work when I'm writing wearing gloves, it just helps give that positive grip. Another hesitation I had with this pen initially is that the cap doesn't post. Really haven't found that to be that big of an issue. I either hold on to it or put it back in my pocket. I found by not having the cap on the back of the pen, the balance is a lot better so I can write a lot more easily for longer. That or you can lend out the pen if somebody wants to borrow it, hold on to the cap. Your likelihood of getting the pen back is a lot higher. Just a very nice pen overall and the added benefit, if you know how to use it, you can use it as a coupon or impact tool. Just an extra option, not something I'm primarily carrying it for, but hey, extra little benefit. The next constant companion I have in my EDC is a flashlight of some variety. If I'm going about my day-to-day -day business and I'm not going to get into any super crazy situations, I like to opt for the Fulmov EDC C1. I've got the exclusive Illumin.com brass version here and the more widely available aluminium version. They both have an output of about 400 lumens. This one has a little bit less since it has a high CRI emitter. They're both powered by a USB rechargeable 10440 cell, which is absolutely fantastic. And I've got to say the user interface on these things are hands down the best I've come across in almost any other flashlight. Compared to all the other AAA size flashlights I've come across, these things have some of the best output, runtime, and user interfaces in any small compact EDC size flashlight. And for the price, I really, really have not come across any better light. I'm super excited to see how closely Folimov listens to the EDC community and incorporates suggested changes in their updated lights. Hands down, the best AAA sized EDC flashlight I've come across. Definitely worth checking out. Next up are these little carabiners. I've been using these across my EDC, whether I'm clipping water bottles to my pack or gloves or my keys, something like that. Compared to your traditional dollar store carabiners, these are very, very well made. Both made by reputable climbing and mountaineering companies. This is a DMM XSRE. This is a Mammut mini bionic carabiner, both available at your local climbing, mountaineering, or REI store. Fantastically well made. They're not made for climbing, but they can hold a little bit of weight. This one is rated to four kilo newtons, so can hold about six, eight hundred pounds. Best of all, the gates are made very well. They have that key lock system right there, so they're not going to pull apart. If you're going to clip your keys or something important, you don't have to worry about it falling apart or breaking. Very quality little items. Next up is another new piece of gear. This is a Popov's Leatherwork Slim card holder wallet. They sent me this for review and honestly, I didn't think I'd like it as much as I actually do. Initially, I thought leather wallets would be a little bit thick and bulky, but this one is not. Just a little bit thicker than my favorite recycled firefighter sergeant wallet. It was definitely time to replace that one since the back strap on that one is getting real loose and I was dropping cash left and right. But uh, same form factor, disappears in the pocket. I love these slim card holder wallets. You can hold up to eight cards in the back there. I've got a slot in the front or back for cash or whatever I need. Fantastic little wallet, very well made. I am very happy with this transition. Next up is my watch. This is a Sunto 9 Barrel. It allows me to track my workouts navigate, set GPS points, do all that good stuff. Unfortunately, I've had a couple issues with this. The display occasionally goes black. I have to completely restart my watch. And I've actually had the buckle break on me, nearly losing this while I was swimming in open water. I would have lost a very, very expensive watch. So overall, I don't know if I can recommend this watch. It's not been the best performer. It's not the most user configurable or user friendly. Sunto is traditionally a very solidly performing watch, but this one doesn't really live up to the standards that I have come to expect from them. So 
Probably going to be my last Sunto watch, unfortunately, but uh, still a solid performer. If it's what you need and what you like, uh, they track very well. Their navigation works really excellently. I don't know. A little bit on the fence on this one, but that's my watch for right now. Might change in the future. We'll see. Last but not least in my rotation are my Jaybird Terra Pro headphones. If I'm not actively doing something where I need to listen or pay attention to something, I'm listening to a podcast or an audiobook trying to you know, improve and learn things. I've heard that's a good thing to do. But uh, these are very solid headphones. They sound really good. The battery life is phenomenal. I can go four or five days listening to this for a couple hours a day without needing to recharge. Unfortunately, I am going to have to send these back for warranty. As you can see, the buttons are peeling. Um, overall, the fit is reasonable. They're not the best fit in my ears. They usually fall out. I have to readjust them when I'm running. But uh, I've had worse headphones. So... Probably not going to get another set of these, but while they're still working, they're all right. So, so there we have it. This is my standard complement of tools that gets me through my standard run-of-the-mill day. Of course, I've swapped things out. If I have a little bit more standard or arduous of a task, I might take a little different flashlight or knife, but this is the core component of things I've had with me for the past month or so. If you think there's any piece of gear that I should add to my rotation, or if you think there's anything I can change or do better, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, stay tuned for some more gear reviews and EDC-related videos. As always, stay safe.